It's just unfettered access, huh? Yeah. Take it here, take it there. Yeah. Nice. Tyler's gonna go out in the Supra Pace car, dude. Supra? Probably <laughs> worth, this is probably the most expensive Mark IV Supra of all time. Think of about that. Time? Yeah. Most expensive Mark IV. 7,400 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, miles. 7,400 miles. Oh, it's got like one seats. off, one off. Oh. Cloth seats. All right, all right. Get it straight, like bro. It. Oh, I, I gotta move the seat forward a little bit. If My you're gonna be, if you're gonna be B rolling, those two red switches are the pace car lights. Oh, hit him! Hit him! Hit him! Yeah. Hit him! Let me see him! Let me see him! Yo! Yo! You have to get a clip of that, dude. You have to get a clip of that. Oh my god! Yo, Tyler is driving the pace car. Tyler, you're driving the pace car! This is fantastic. So sick. I haven't even made it five feet yet. <laughs> All right. Now on to our actual video that we're gonna shoot. All right, so how are you? I'm doing good. I'm ready to re-up, let's go. So Seamus, tell me what you do and where you're from. So I own a performance shop, uh, Taylor Chassis Solutions. We build and prep and maintain and restore Japanese and European vehicles for people, primarily Japanese stuff. I'm a huge fan of the JDM you know, vehicles, but we do a lot of European stuff just because we're in the motorsport space, so it just comes with the territory. But yeah, we do everything from full fabrication of a custom part from design to manufacture to you know implementation. We do geometric analysis on suspension stuff primarily as well. Hence, Taylor Chassis Solutions. Actually, we were, we were recently working with Ryan on some of the geometry stuff right. with the Formula Supra. Mr. Turk, yep. which he actually took his car. Yeah, no problem. Um, but so, I guess your introduction to me, you, you introduce yourself as like, hey, uh, you you saw my ST185 Celica video at Coda, and what was the story? Well, it was just so it was interesting. Um, to see it, and it would happen to be with a person who was dealing with similar suspension issues and stuff like that, and he referenced that some other guy had done it first. You're that guy. I believe I'm that guy, I, I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we, very similar, you know, suspension geometry changes to this car were going with a forged aluminum Prius knuckle. So what is this, what's going on here? Is this, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of like the the celebrity race cars that they had they built for for the celebrities for the Toyota well, that was Lobby like Chip a, Grand Prix. That was like a seventh gen Celica. Oh, I don't know but, something or other, but so this is this is before that. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, considerably. This is like an '88. '88. What is what is this? What did this start life? So at? it started life as a ST165 Celica All Track. 88-ish, maybe 87. But yeah, it's basically the first gen of the Celica Alltrack chassis that went on to become the CS and the GT4. And you know, they were called GT4 in Japan in this platform uh, in the all-wheel drive. But yeah, that was like the beginning of this drivetrain, the beginning of these motors being used in this chassis in this way, and Toyota's entry into the all-wheel drive space for WRC. Jeez, okay, so what is this one used for? This is a client of yours? Correct, yeah, so this is, Eric Thompson owns this car. Uh, we originally built the car for him probably five years ago. The car started life as a rally car. So then we stripped it down, sandblasted it, put it on a rotisserie, completely rebuilt it from a bare tub, and outfitted it to be used for circuit racing. So it was used in SCCA uh, Super Touring Under, basically as a Super Tourer. And you know, through those teething phases, we realized like the hubs are not gonna last. I mean, they were smoked from brand new in five laps. So that was one of the first challenging things. Obviously, you know, we were trying to add our flair to it, trick it out, sort of get rid of some of the excess baloney, strip it down, motorsport it up, you know, went standalone right away, went, you know, all the motorsport stuff. Started dealing with the teething phases on the suspension and you know, just 
started going at it, whatever it takes to, to not make this thing be falling apart after five laps. So I started looking at uh, axle spline counts and you know, we had already at that point bought four sets of wheels for the car, so I'm not gonna change to 5x114. So I need something that's 5x100, 26 or 27 spline count that sort of fits within the geometry of, you know, relatively within the ballpark of a factory cast iron knuckle. And I started looking at cars and I realized that, you know, the Prius is pretty close. You know, I said, okay, what's a modern modern Toyota that has a preloaded bearing, meaning that it's bolted on with its own independent bolt flange to an upright. It's the right spline count, it's the right lug pattern. They're preloaded, which means that they can usually handle quite a bit more side load. Um, it's just a much bigger bearing. So then I, I started looking at that and I'm like, okay, like geometrically that's very close. And then basically, you know, looking at these cars, I start to realize like, wow. Uh, hybrid cars are way overbuilt. The ball joints are huge. The tie rod end tapers are huge. It's all huge because of the torque, right? So you have all this instant, to, it's, now I say all, <laughs> it's, it, it is a Prius after all, but you've got all this instant torque, right? So when you're, you may not necessarily have issues like this in warm climates, but when you're in cold climates, slip to grip is a huge problem. And that's why like factory fit axles snap, slip to grip. But basically you have all this torque, the thing slips tire and then it grips up and there's a huge shock load inrush that has to dissipate somewhere. And if the material's not big enough, it just breaks. So now I also think it's overkill, but Toyota makes ball joints for Priuses huge. They make tie rod ends huge. They make wheel bearings huge, way bigger than they need to be. Axles way bigger than they need to be. Probably just for the longevity portion. Abs well, absolutely, longevity, but also being able to withstand their theoretic torque you know, okay, in the worst case scenario, how much can we anticipate putting in there? We engineer a margin of failure or, you know, a margin of excess on top of that so that we don't ever have to tarnish our name of incredible reliability, right? So, th so they're overbuilding and they're thinking like, okay, you know, we got to kind of go overkill because we can't hurt our brand, especially with hybrid stuff. But when you start looking at other hybrids, the, it, it's the same with other manufacturers. You know, Honda does the same thing. They have bigger ball joints, bigger tie rod ends on the CRZs. It's the same geometric platform as a fit, but the tapers are all larger and the ball joints are large, it's all larger. It doesn't make really a lot of sense to me, but I understand, you know, sort of the headspace that the engineers were in, like, okay, we gotta like make sure that we're not having reliability issues or whatever. All that to say, we use that stuff. We figured out that it's pretty close. I made a custom ball joint custom axle spacer, uh, custom outer tie rod with bump steer kit so I could dial it in to a zero bump geometry, which is where it want, you know, where you need it to be. All this to basically keep this competitive or keep this Yeah, just keep it from, keep the wheels from falling off the car. Just because Eric likes this chassis or likes Correct. the way it drives? Yeah, he's a big fan of the ST165. He's a big fan of Toyota. He's always been a big Toyota head and he's always had a love affair with the 165. So it was like, he's got three of them, you know? He's, he's very dedicated to the chassis and, and has always been a huge fan of the platform and motorsport and how this platform was used in motorsport. So does this have a e-brake or like a, it's a it's hydro a, brake? Yeah, it's a hydro pass-through. So it's a, like a staging brake or like, you know, say you just want to be silly, you know, and slide the car, whatever. Um, basically like the car is used this way, you know, it's used for wheel to wheel circuit racing or whatever, but we wanted it to be silly and could be used for anything. And this was really to like pay homage to the fact that the car was a rally car. And when he bought it in 02 or whatever, it had a rally brake. So we're like, let's just keep that little feature in there that says, hey, this is still a rally car. You know, we've gussied it up with anodized this and whatever, but. but how does it disconnect the center drive shaft or something when nope. you pull it? No. Nope. What does it do? It just locks the rear only? Yeah. So the center, well, in this car, it's a plate type. So he has the old Team Toyota Europe, a rally car, CAS diffs, which are pretty uncommon. So yeah, I mean, you're, you're using, basically you need to break away the lock between the center diff. Factory, they would have been a viscous coupler, so there's some give there. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, basically you load the car up and pull it quick and it'll initiate a slide and 
Yeah, clutch in. I mean, I've I've done donuts in this car in the parking lot and stuff. I, you know, very much like you see Ryan doing the same thing and Ryan's car in his SD205. I mean, that's basically the same transmission with the same diffs that they've had since 88, you know, within reason. So then uh, the motor, yeah. what is this out of? So this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a uh, ST215 Gen 4 Caldina motor. So it's just the newest rendition of the 3S GTE. For us, you know, we're restricted by for power anyway, so we didn't really care about power. The biggest thing with the Gen 4 is the PCV system was heavily improved, so we're not pushing oil up the drains. You know, the motor's canted at like 18, 20 degrees or whatever it is. So what happens is you get the oil drain down the back and the PCV ports are very small, so crankcase pressure, whoosh, pushes all that oil up and out the valve cover. I mean, we used to push like two quarts of oil. So we just said, screw it. We switched to the Gen 4 and all the problems went away. The factory castings are Gen 4. All the internals are aftermarket. Okay, so then with this restrictor on, how much power does this make? Right now it makes like 218 horsepower at the wheels. It's a 38 millimeter inlet restrictor. So the inside of this is only 38 mils. I just realized this is a GLTC car. Yeah. I thought you were running in time attack. No, no. If I was running in time attack, this would be twice as big and there wouldn't be one of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is really cool. Okay. See, this is what I love about Gridlife GLTC. So I didn't say this yet, but we're at Lime Rock for the first time with Gridlife. And uh, the fact that you're able to race this against, what are some of the weird cars that we had this, this Lots weekend? of K24 S2000s. There's a C5 Z06 Corvette out there, or maybe even a couple of them. There's a V8 swapped, you know, GR86, FR, FT86, Civics, Integras, lots of K-Series motors, Miatas. I mean, it's really kind of big variety, lots of BMWs, E46, E36. How, how did he do? How did he do so far? Um, so this is our first race with the car. Normally we did SCCA, so this we're just trying out the GLTC format. I think our finishing position was like 14th, so like kind of like mid-pack or so, maybe just under mid. We are under-tired for the class, so the car weighs like 3,100 pounds, but we're only on a 255. Our allowable is like a 285. Wow. There's one 285 tire in stock in the country right now that we would run, so it just wasn't an option, so we did a 255, 225 stagger. You know, we're just sort of shaking it down. It, it was, this was a fact-finding mission for us. See, is it possible to not only get to the power limitations and weight limitations of this class to run and be competitive, but is it a format that we like? Is it a, is it a paddock that we like? So all that stuff is pointing to yes right now. We just gotta get, you know, tires and things worked out, the body work on these cars is very narrow. So like, these are 255s, there's no way a 285 would fit in here on the appropriate size wheel. So, given what we've done and sort of the car that we brought, we're, I, you know, I'm pretty satisfied with, with where we're at and we know that we have, you know, only growth from here, so. Yeah, no, it's super I'm, cool. I'm, 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 I'm glad yeah. you guys are here. Yeah. Seamus, you're, you're holding out on me. What? You didn't tell me everything about the car. What do you mean? What, what's going on with the rear end? The rear knuckles are Highlander knuckles modified. They're basically the same as Celica. They, you know, the pickup points are basically the same. It just changes the trailing link location a little bit. And then we modified those knuckles so that we could put Prius knuckles adapted onto them so that the spares are the same front and rear. So we only have to buy one type of hub for the whole car. Oh, it's the yeah. front hub front, from a Prius. From a Prius. That's running the rears also. Correct, yeah. Jeez. Because the spline count on the axles is the same there as well. So I made a cut, like basically, they were like a press-in bearing knuckle. So I cut all that shit off, fly cut it on a milling machine, and then made an adapter plate to bolt a Prius hub to it 
so that I can use the same spares for the whole car. Huh. Yeah. Because the rear bearings had issues too. Wow. Yeah. Because okay. they're only like this wide factory. Like they just fall apart. Huh. Um, that's why none of the motorsport versions of these cars that TTE ran, they had all Chrome Molly 4130 custom uprights and you know real racy stuff. They threw the factory stuff in the garbage. So there was really never any development in that direction. This is without a doubt the only 165 modified race car I've ever seen. Yeah. It's just because they're just hard to, to get to this level. Yeah, there are some guys in Europe that are close, but I don't really feel, first of all, they're not using it for this. They're either uh, drag racing them or they're doing rally stuff. I mean, there might be some guys doing some track, track day stuff, but they're usually in SD162s, which were not the all track or they're in the 185 or the 205 chassis. But I think it's pretty safe to say outside of Team you know, team Toyota Europe, factory WRC effort, there really is not another 165 modified in this way to this extent on probably the planet. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. Now I have the full story. I don't <laughs> have the full story, but but wait, wait, I think that's the, wait, wait, yeah. is there more? So there, so uh, we ended up building custom GRZs for the car because they obviously don't support this chassis whatsoever. And the floor pan was modified. There's a lot of interior goodies and bits and electronics and full Haltech suite and PDMs and you know, everything is absolutely custom to the nines, but that's it's so cool. I that's love basically the, it. I love the throwback livery too. Yeah. 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 I yeah, think that it's that so was cool. Eric's idea. You know, he showed it to me and I'm like, Heck yeah. Now that was primarily used on like, I believe the uh, A86 or the like the Leven, maybe they were JTCC cars or whatever was that, you know, group of racing back then. I don't necessarily think it was ever on a 165, but they're so similar in the nose and it was a very similar livery. Toyota did a throwback on the FT86 first gen that was basically very similar to that, which was like paying homage to the Leven A86 livery. But yeah, so we kind of mashed it up or whatever. Maybe it's not Celica specific or Celica appropriate, but I thought like it's just so good. Yeah, you know, like, no, let's it's do super it. cool. Yeah. I love it. So why is it that you guys have 5052s in the back? So we had, this car has like 19 sets of wheels at this point, but I really like the look of the Turbo Mac, but we couldn't get a Turbo Mac in time to run the stagger that we're running. So it's a 255, 225 stagger. I wanted a retro-esque wheel, so I'm like, let's put the Turbo Max. He's got white Tarmax, Turbo Max, you know, black Turbo, uh, Turbo Max, Anki RPF ones, which obviously it's you know very motorsporty wheel, but kind of played out. I'm like, let's do something like that'll look really, like really racy, <laughs> mismatched wheels and just weird stuff. Like, let's do it. So it's Koenigs in the front. They're a 17 by nine, and then the backs are a 17 by eight. But yeah, awesome, cool. I think we got it all. <laughs> but